assignment that we're continuing from the previous assignment that's in the playlist link below the like button it's super important to understand this previous assignment before we go on to this next one um, because it's gonna be based off that so these are the steps here there's some more down here you can screenshot these because i will not be coming back to them but these are all the steps that we're going to be following in order to do this and so this is what we're going to be looking at i realize this last one is a little bit long so i'll just like space this out so with this, we now know what we're able to do and what we're supposed to accomplish. So with that in mind, let's go and actually code for this. This is what we've had in the previous assignment. Again, not explaining it here, it's all explained very well in the previous one. So what we're going to be looking at is this one right here. Now there are a few noticeable differences. I'm not going to be putting everything here just because of timing, but let's see if I can actually put them side by side. So putting them side by side, we can see the differences. Now for the one on the left, just assume that there's this green on the side as the power so that I can fit it all together. But the one on the right, um, let's read through the instructions and see what we have to do. So after having filled in some memory with random values, as in the prior assignment, we want to be able to reset the counter. Now I've kind of already prepared for this, but we're gonna go through this right now. So we're going to return it to address zero and now read out the values. So we are going to want to basically have our reset, which we don't have labeled here. We're going to want to not just load the values, we're going to want to, or store the values, we're going to want to load them into a multiplexer. So we want to use the lowest bit of this read out data to switch a multiplexer between selecting from two constant four bit values. And that's what this multiplexer part is here, that's new. A lot of this is new. But first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to start the counter. So I'm going to reset the simulation. Everything is reset now, right? Everything is completely reset. Let's start filling in our memory with some values. So we're going to go into, and this can be done from this previous one as well. We'll go into ticks enabled. Uh, I think there's a problem. We'll turn off the simulation for this one, and then we'll do simulation enabled for this one. There you go. And then you go ticks enabled for this one. So now it's going to be start filling with values. Now, if we have this still, it would be outputting what we have right here in our random generator. It's not going to output anything here though yet, because remember, we are storing values into here. We're not loading them into our multiplexer. We're going to keep putting these into memory while I read this, but we're going to add a button control and connect it to the reset pin of our counter. This is an asynchronous reset. And a hint is to test this is to test the switch is working, to use the finger cursor, which I have here, and we're gonna press the reset button. It's going to move us back to the start. At least it should move us back to the start. It should make it to be zero immediately. So let's actually turn off the ticks so it's not ticking. If we wanted to manually tick it, we could just keep pressing this clock and it'll go through it. Now, if we want to reset the counter, not the memory, but the counter to zero, we're gonna press this button, which I've wired from zero down to here, and I've just labeled it as reset counter. We're going to add a pin control. This is the next step under wiring. So in our kind of tabs here, we're gonna to want to get this pin, place it here. We're gonna add a pin control under our wiring. And then um, with its three states and output, we're gonna select it to no. So output is no and the three state is also no. We're gonna connect its output to the load pin of our RAM so the output goes straight into the load pin. And then after it's in the load pin, the not of its output is going to be stored in the pin of the RAM, in the store pin of the RAM, the STR. So that means when it's low, it's zero, we're going to be writing. So it's storing. And then when it's high, we're going to be reading. So we're just going to be loading the values. Um, the not is just a gate. We're going to have the not gate here. It's an inverter. So we're just going to be inverting the output like that. Now, for some reason, I can't press escape. Um, but this is going to work, and to test this, if it's working, is to switch to the finger cursor and press the pin to toggle between if it's high or low. The pin is going to default to low, enabling writes, and we will switch it to high to read from the RAM. So we can take this, we'll switch this to high, and it's gonna load, and we can see it's gonna read from our RAM. Well, why is it one and why is it A? Well, we're gonna go over this multiplexer in a, just a quick second. We're going to add a bus splitter to extract the lowest bit of our RAM's data output bus. So we know that this data bit width is 8 bits, 
So this splitter that we're going to have next, if I can click off of it, this splitter right here is going to be a fan out of eight so that we can get each of the individual bits like this. We want the lowest bit because the instruction says add a bus splitter, which is right here in our wiring to extract the lowest bit of RAM's data output bus. So the lowest bit is zero. We're extracting it here. That's good. We're going to want to add four bit constant controls one set to A and one set to 1. Um, and the way we're going to change this is by just making the data bits 4 for each of them. So that way it goes into our 4-bit multiplexer. Because the next, next step is to add this 4-bit multiplexer. And whatever we want can be found in this library right here. So we add the 4-bit multiplexer with two constants connected to its inputs. 1 to input 0, and then A is in the input 1. If you hover over them, it'll actually show which one is which. My cursor is a little bit big, but it'll say input one. Now there is a glitch between these two inputs down here for some reason. It doesn't show, but we'll go over which is which in a second. So we want to connect its select pin to the extracted lower bit RAM output of the data bus. So notice how I'm sending this wire into here. So the multiplexer, like I said, has a bug and it doesn't display the name of select and output controls but the one closest to the two inputs is select and the other is our output, which we're just gonna set high for here. We're gonna add another hex display and connect it to the output of the multiplexer, which I just did right here. After connecting everything, we're gonna switch to the finger cursor, switching here. And then we're gonna want to set the RAM load pin to low. We are going to want to toggle the clock and fill the memory, which we've already done. Um, and then after filling the memory with some things, which we've done a pretty good job with, we're going to want to press the reset counter button. And then we're going to want to switch from our writing to reading. So we've toggled this, it's now high, that's good. Now when we toggle the clock, which is right here, and I'll actually go into the uh, ticks enabled just to have it go through automatically, it's going to read out the values to the multiplexer. Now the multiplexer itself should toggle the hex display between one when the RAM output is even and A when the output is odd. So the criterion for this is when the submission is opened, the uh, clock will start, the memory should be filled, and the output display will be blank. The clock will stop, the reset button for our counter will be pressed, and then the memory, uh, return, the memory location return address should be zero. And then we're going to toggle the read write pin, which we've done. It's high currently. And then when we re enable the clock, which we're about to do, the output hex display should switch between 1 and 8, depending on the lower bit value read out of the RAM. Let's press ticks enabled. And also make sure everything is clearly labeled and everything is clearly laid out. So ticks enabled. We can see that it's going to go through this. And whenever it has an even number, it's going to be 1. And when there's an odd number, it's going to be A. So A when it's odd, and then 1 when it's even. See, it's even here, even here, and then when it goes to 67, it should be an odd. Or it should be A. <laughs> so A here, and then if it's a positive, it'll be a 1, which it is. And so that's going to be our next project completed and done. We're able to turn in this .circ file, I believe it is. Um, and that's how we would do basic CPU stuff. It's basically grabbing some instruction or some address from memory, and then we're displaying or doing something with it here. More like this can be found in the playlist linked below the like button. Other CPE and electronics engineering can be found on this channel as well.